After much anticipation, Ron DeSantis announced his presidential bid on Wednesday, and it felt a bit like a Zoom call at the beginning of the pandemic. Glitches, crashes, muted mics, DeSantis' Twitter campaign launch had it all. It was a rocky start to what is likely to be an uphill battle for the Florida governor, even though DeSantis is Trump's strongest challenger for the Republican nomination. He's trailing the former president in the polls by 30%. Riding the ship requires restoring sanity to our society. This is the slick campaign ad Ron DeSantis wants people to see. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback. But the Florida governor made his actual presidential campaign launch on the social media platform Twitter. That involved a half-hour delay due to technical issues. Uh, tonight, I'm pleased to introduce two individuals who've done more to loosen the... The sound cut out. His commitment to freedom and his willingness to put his money where or his mouth became distorted. With only 420,000 listeners at its peak, DeSantis' launch was all rather underwhelming. <laughs> particularly for a man who's made his political career by successfully courting the right. Our bottom line is we do not surrender to the woke mob. Florida's where woke goes to die. This is a Republican heavyweight who's stacked up a number of wins for the right. Those include a ban on discussing gender identity and sexual orientation in schools in Florida. That's meant his presidential bid has already provoked protests, including in Miami. But it's this man who is DeSantis' biggest hurdle to securing the Republican candidacy. Polls show the former U.S. President Donald Trump still has double the support of DeSantis. And while they used to be allies, they're certainly not now. Okay, so remember this. Ron DeSanctis. Did anyone ever hear of DeSanctis? De Sanctimonious. De Sanctimonious. It will now be up to the Florida governor to convince the Republicans that he's the man they can rely on to win the White House. And DW's Washington correspondent Michaela Kufner has more. Michaela, DeSantis took a gamble on Twitter and Elon Musk, and it doesn't seem to have worked out. What's been the reaction, or rather, the fallout? Well, it didn't work out for Ron DeSantis, but it doesn't mean that it didn't work out for Elon Musk, because everybody <laughs> is talking about it. And Elon Musk was very quick to invite all other presidential hopefuls to come onto Twitter as well, and him talking to them. So um, Ron DeSantis, though, in what was billed as an unscripted interview, basically suggesting that other interviews are generally scripted, which simply isn't true, certainly isn't for Deutsche Welle, um, he actually needs a bit of scripting. He comes off pretty well in those uh, promo videos, uh, but he's not seen as someone who's particularly personable. So instead of him being able to have a grand speech, a grand declaration, he opted for audio only uh, that simply backfired uh, technically, certainly, on him. And we heard a lot of rhetoric we've heard before in his speeches. This didn't work out for him at all, drawing ridicule from really across the board here in D.C. and across the country uh, with a great expectation that he will make good on this when he goes and tours those early primary states beginning already next week. I think that's what we will then look back at as his real declaration of what he actually aims to take into this campaign, uh, rather than just being the one who sounds Trump-esque, won't uh, use the word Trump and uh, accept uh, from basically stating that he can out-Trump Trump, Trump uh, not in as many words, uh, has launched policies that could well backfire on him, particularly when it comes to the whole abortion question, when it comes uh, to firearms. These are not issues uh, that he can really score with in terms of popularity across the country, mm. although he may well do in Florida. Yeah. And let's talk about out-Trumping Trump, because DeSantis has obviously taken many lessons straight out of the Trump playbook. He's never actually been up against the former president, though. Do you think he can beat Trump at his own game? It doesn't look like it. Uh, when you see both in front of a crowd, um, Ron DeSantis simply doesn't cut it. But there are two important factors. First of all, Donald Trump 
may get weaker, although he's way ahead in the polls, but he does face a lot of um, open legal issues, still that, that um, special investigation into January 6th that still isn't resolved. We may see him in the court once again over hush money payments uh, early next year, and that's already for sure. So he may be able to gain some ground there. And we saw in the gubernatorial race when Ron DeSantis won, him lining up more than $200 million. And we know that a lot of big money is going to get lined up against Donald Trump in the Republican camp, and they will be looking out for the most likely candidate, regardless of what other qualities he has or he or she. But there is no she at this moment in time. That still is Ron DeSantis with everybody else in the single digits uh, mm. when it comes to polling amongst Republicans. So that he can probably cash in on. In other developments today, one of the ringleaders of the January 6th attack on the Capitol was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes was convicted of seditious conspiracy after being found guilty of orchestrating a violent plot to overturn the 2020 election and keep Donald Trump in power. Rhodes' sentence is the longest handed down so far among hundreds of January 6th cases. Michaela, how significant is this and how much of it could rub off on Donald Trump? It is very significant. Also, another member of that group, Kelly Meggs, was uh, sentenced to 12 years imprisonment there. Stuart Rhodes actually didn't physically do anything, and that's also what his defense team said. It was only words, they said, that led to this uh, sentence, and they will certainly be challenging this uh, in court. Uh, but at the same time, it shows that there was somebody who actually was in command and who was described by the judge as still being a danger to democracy in the United States. So that is very significant indeed, particularly if a line can be drawn to Donald Trump, he, who may still face himself um, really Im implicated in this. So that is still something that was feeding into his campaign, potentially. Michaela Kufner in Washington. Many thanks.